And we're live. All right, good evening and welcome to the Township of Derry's Board of Supervisor meeting for Tuesday, December 15th, 2020. This is the time scheduled, uh, the time and date scheduled for our regularly, our regular township meeting. Uh, first, I'd like to indicate that the board met in executive session at 6 p.m. this evening to discuss land, legal and personnel matters. Um, and that executive session concluded at approximately 6.53 p.m. At this time, I'll call our meeting to order and we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. So Mr. Blayhush, if you'll post the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, and with, with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you, everybody. Mr. Chrisman, would you please conduct a roll call? Certainly. Supervisor Nutt? Here. Supervisor Zamuda? Here. Supervisor Wyckoff? Here. Supervisor Court? Here. And Supervisor Abruzzo? I am here. There are five present, Mr. Chairman. All right, very good. Thank you, Mr. Chrisman. As such, all members of the board are present. That takes us to the next item on our agenda, which is the visitor or public comment session of the agenda. It's our first such session of the evening. Uh, we ask anyone willing to uh, make a statement during this time to identify him or herself by name, first name and last name and address to try to limit your comments to approximately three minutes. We ask that you be brief, that you get to your point, that you make your point. Um, and if you get too close to the three minute mark, I will try to hurry you along so that we have plenty of time to get to the business, uh, the business portion of our meeting. Uh, and it's important that everyone know that all, our, all of our meetings are recorded for the purpose of uh, uh, maintaining accurate minutes. Um, and with the Zoom meeting, uh, the meetings are not only recorded uh, and preserved at the township uh, on our, uh, for posterity, but these meetings themselves uh, are available um, on YouTube uh, for the foreseeable future. So you just be aware that you are being recorded um, during any period of the meeting in which you speak. So with that, Mr. Blayhush, I'll I will defer to you and as uh, there are speakers, I'd ask that you usher them into the, from the queue into the meeting and then those speakers can identify themselves and make their comment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First tonight we have Kevin Ferguson. Good evening, Kevin Ferguson, 1338 Quail Hollow Road. I brought up uh, the issue last week about the some issues with the community center and hopefully we'll hear some construction costs and, and the, the amount of cost spent to make those ch changes. <clears throat> but I also talked about the Moeller Center and I wanna bring up some more, a couple of other issues with the Moeller Center. Uh, my, <clears throat> my concern last week was it has never been explained to the taxpayer how that's gonna Moeller Center's relationship with the, the taxpayer funded community center. So I looked at the, uh, uh, it, it, so, so, some information was given on uh, how it might be funded. But I took a look at your business plan that uh, the, the new members had put together specifically uh, to make some changes. And it was the two year plan and I could not find any operational cost uh, itemization in that plan at all for the Moeller Center. Unless it's buried somewhere, I couldn't find it. Doesn't seem, doesn't seem to be there's any allowance for operational costs in that budget. And on the revenue side for the Moeller Center, it's there's an amount given and it's listed as a contribution. That contribution is described as uh, helping to pay, helping to pay for the utility costs. This is a concern. Uh, 
the Mueller Center is a private organization. They have, have a paid staff. There's, there's also the allowance for offices in our community center for, for that paid staff. There's members, uh, they, ha they have a kitchen in there, in their facility, they have their private entrance. And I, I wanna make, make this clear, I, I have no issue with the Mueller Center or its members and from their perspective, it probably makes perfect sense to be uh, involved with the community center as far as where they're located, but not at the taxpayer expense. And it was suggested that they're, you're going to look at uh, the relationship with Penn State. Well, Penn State's in a position to be financially terrible. The taxpayers aren't. It was suggested that some, uh, some of them would volunteer. Well, that's the kind of thing you put in a business plan. How many hours are going to be volunteered and, and what does that save the township? None of this is laid out in the business plan. And this, and this to me is a concern because uh, from the very beginning, it was the impression was they, everybody knows it's a private organization, but they were gonna be renting space. That's, I think that's the impression everybody had that they were gonna be renting space. Just as uh, I would rent space from an office, if I wanted to run a business, they tell me this is what it costs. I have my own utilities I pay. That was the clear impression I think the taxpayers had. Uh, and my, my understanding is Chairman Abruzzo was on the board of the Mueller Center I think this whole uh, arrangement, the Mueller Center needs to be defined clearly to the taxpayers. You just took that business plan and reduced the community center, reduced the size of the pool from the taxpayers. Now it's based on operational cost savings. And you did that for the, for the generations to come for the next 40 to, 40 to 50 years. But at the same time, it's certainly clear that the expectation is the taxpayers are going to be funding the operational costs of the Mueller Center. I don't think that's right at all. If you were that concerned about our tax dollars, rather than take from the community and the taxpayers, perhaps you should have looked at the Mueller Center. In the very least, there should have been a, 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 an inclusion of operational costs and exactly what they were gonna pay. And it's obvious that you have no plan at all for any of this. This is something I really think that you need to explain to the taxpayers. Thank you for the time. Next speaker tonight is Rich Campbell. Mr. Abruzzo, before we go on to the next caller, would you like me to try to answer some of Mr. Ferguson's questions? I think that would be appropriate. Thank you. Sure. Kevin, thank you for bringing that, that forward in there. Um, I think it's, those are good questions. And I, I wanted to let you know that first of all, the Moeller Center is bringing forward toward the project about $500,000 uh, in support, both from them uh, and also from uh, the very generous donation from the leader family. Uh, in addition, many of their members are making and continue to make contributions. But in terms of um, actual operating expenses, they are going to be sharing in a portion of the utilities, but also paying rent each month of about, I think, $2,000. Uh, and then on top of that, their space is only going to be used during the daytime. So let's say between nine and three. And then after that, that space in the senior center, all that classroom space and flexible space can be rented. And that's income the township will, can see and realize. So, um, so it, it may not be clear in whatever you're reading, but I did want to make sure that you and others understood that. Uh, and I'm sure uh, Matt Mandia could go into more detail and, uh, and share more specifics, but I did want to pass that along just so that you and others understood. So thank you. Thank you for, for clarifying that, Susan. And, um, and whatever agreement existed with the Moeller Center and, the, and this project um, was worked out well before I ever began serving on this board uh, in February. So, um, but we'll do, I, I, sure, I know Matt Mandia, I think expected to make a presentation later on in the meeting. So I'll let Matt clean up any other information there, any other misinformation that might have, uh, that might be out there. But we appreciate Mr. Ferguson bringing it forward. Uh, next was, I think I saw Mr. Gamble, was his hand up? Yes, it was. Mr. Gamble, please unmute your microphone.
I can't. Brian, I don't Hello. hear Mr. Gamble. Mr. Gamble, you are still muted. I think we're just going to have to move on and maybe he can, maybe he can keep, maybe he can call in separately at least at the, on the second public comment session, we'll give him an opportunity to call in and. Hello, can you? Uh, there we go. I can hear you, Mr. Gamble. Oh. All right, let's, uh, while he's still working with that, Brian, I see. Uh, How about now, you hear me now? Yeah, now I can hear you, yes. Okay, you froze, my screen froze. Okay, Rich Gamble, 39 Hawkersville Road. Uh, just to add other concerns regarding Mr. Ferguson's comments about the Mower Center, what, would be the possibility of using the Granada gym since that's vacant now for the purpose of the mower center, which they'd have access to it 24 hours a day. And if they're going to be paying $2,000 a month rent to the community center, that's a lot more than what uh, I think uh, powertrain was paying. So wouldn't that offset some of our expenses, something to consider. It's sitting there vacant. And if they're gonna be paying $2,000 a month, which I think is considerably high based on their contributions from their members, uh, I think that's something we might wanna explore. And then that way they would have the building 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And there are facilities there that they could benefit from. And if they wanted to use the pool for swimming, it's like anybody else in the community, you join the community center, pay your annual dues and have utilization to the pool because that, that's an extra privilege. Okay, my main concern again is, I was warning is, has anybody addressed the issue about increasing the entertainment tax for Hershey residents here, because we're the one footing the bill. And the reason I'm bringing this up, and I'm gonna continue bringing it up every meeting until I see some actions. I've talked to the school board, Derry Township School Board. They would like to discuss it because they'll benefit from it. Again, the communities around us, theme parks, are all charging a 5% of the price of a ticket. Now, just figuring out what we lost this year already. I know COVID has played a big impact on, you know, not having access to the park and other things. But looking at the transportation study, all that benefits is access to the Hershey entities first. It's becoming another... Uh, New Orleans, or Orlando's Disneyland. They did the same thing down there. They rerouted all the roads. So it went directly around the community and into the uh, Disney World. So what I'm saying is, are there any discussions that are going to be taking place between Derry Township, the Derry Township School District, and the Hershey Entertainment Resorts? I think it's time we look at it from a realistic approach. I mean, they are benefiting from what we do in this community. We're paying for the utilities. We're supplying the utilities, so to speak, the roadways. I think they are benefiting from what our taxpayers are doing for their business. And since we're focusing more as a tourist town versus a residential town, I think it's about time we start focusing on that. Even if it's 2%, it's a lot better than 85 cents on a $100 ticket. I'd rather get $2.85. It's not going to break them. They just spent $150 million to put a new entrance into the park. So I think it's time we get serious about this. And if they don't understand what we, the taxpayers, are footing for them, then maybe we should eliminate some of the services we do provide to the Hershey Park. Thank you, Mr. Gamble. Next tonight, we have Linda Iyer. Hello, Linda Iyer, 2321 Raleigh Road. 
Uh, Mr. Ferguson and Mr. Gamble both bring up questions regarding the operation of the community center. Uh, I believe Mr. Ferguson was looking at the FSA business plan, which was never, in my opinion, owned by Derry Township. Uh, it was presented by the paid um, consultants, and we got no feedback from uh, the Parks and Recreation at that time. And uh, there are other concerns that I have regarding how startup costs will be funded in the future. Um, we've taken a hit this year because of the COVID. We're gonna have continuing hits in 2021. In 2022, we're gonna be faced with losses, uh, costs to start the uh, opening and ramping up of the Township Community Center. And I would like to see some uh, budgets and plans put together and presented at public meetings to uh, see how that's going to be addressed and how it's going to be paid for. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Iyer. Finally, we have Kevin Ferguson again. Yeah, oh, sorry, Kevin Ferguson, 1338 Quill Hall. I, that was um, that was a mistake in raising my hand. I didn't mean to do that, but since I'm here, I just want to make it clear. And I made it clear when I made my statement that I wasn't looking at the SFA pro forma. I was I was referring specifically to the two-year plan, business plan that the uh, the new board members had put together just this year that they used to make changes to, to the uh, community center. I was, I was discussing that specific plan, not the SFA plan. Thank you. Very good. All right. We have no other calls tonight. All right, then, thank you. We'll move on to the consent calendar. There are a number of items. Uh, the first item under A is the adoption of the Board of Supervisors meeting minutes. The first item is from the November 24th, 2020 Board of Supervisors regular meeting. Second item is from the December 1st, 2020 Board of Supervisors regular meeting. All members of the board have had an opportunity to review meeting minutes from both of those prior meetings, and we can accept one motion for both. Mr. Chair, I'll make the motion to accept the November 24th, 2020 Board of Supervisors regular meeting and the December 1st, 2020 Board of Supervisors regular meeting. Thank you, Mr. Zmuda. Motion made by Mr. Zmuda. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Mrs. Nutt. Any further discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I was not present at the December 1st meeting, so I will abstain from voting on that half of the consent agenda item. Uh, just wanted to make that clear. I don't know how you can vote on that half since we're all taking it at once, but I'm I don't okay know. if you abstain That's from both or vote for both. So you can decide, but Maybe I'll abstain from both then, just so it's a little bit that's more probably, clear. So, okay. That's probably cleaner. Uh, motion has been made to adopt the meeting minutes uh, from the November 24th and the December 1st, 2020 Board of Supervisors regular meetings. Uh, all those in favor, vote aye. 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 Any opposed? I'll abstain. One abstention. So me, the motion carries 4-0 with one abstention. Thank you. The next item is B, it's financial and performance securities. The first item, so we're gonna take these all under consent calendar. I don't, Chris, you might have to remind me, but I think I can just identify the items as B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, and B6, and we can take one motion. Right. Or do Thank I have to board. go through each? I think it would be helpful like in, for the minutes just to just read the titles of each one of those, but the board should take a motion actually on A, B, and C. You didn't need to do the minutes separately, but that's okay. So you okay. can take as part of the consent calendar, um, section B and then section C, which would be accounts payable and receivable. All right, so I'll read off. Um, I'll read off the items. B1 is the reduction of financial security provided for the stormwater management plan the Hershey Medical Center, academic support building, parking lot expansion, 
It's S-2017-023. B2 is the release of financial security provided for the post-construction stormwater management plan and erosion and sediment pollution control site plan for Kevin Walker at 1166 Sand Hill Road, S-2019-017. B3 is the reduction of financial security provided for the stormwater management plan for 1702 East Chocolate Avenue, S-2019-019. B4 is the reduction of financial security provided for the stormwater management plan for lot seven at the Oaks, S-2019-021. B5 is the reduction of financial security provided for the stormwater management plan for 931 Hill Church Road, S-2019-025. B6 is the reduction of financial security provided for the stormwater management plan for Kenneth Taylor Jr. for 1140 Jill Drive, S-2020-018. And then those are all the financial and performance security items on the agenda under the consent calendar. Under C, we have approval of accounts payable of $1,375,763.17. And the payroll from November 25th, 2020 in the amount of $325,385.85 and payroll from December 11th, 2020 in the amount of $292,660.28. So as Mr. Chrisman indicated, we can take one motion to approve all the items under financial and performance securities and under the approval of accounts payable and payroll. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the financial and performance securities as well as the approval of accounts payable and payroll as presented. Thank you. Motion made by Ms. Court. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion seconded by Mrs. Nutt. Any discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor of, of approving the motion to approve all of the items under the financial and performance securities on tonight's agenda, as well as approval of the accounts payable and payroll from tonight's agenda under the consent calendar, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the ayes have it. And those items are approved. Thank you. The next item is new business. And the first item under new business is A1-6. It's the consideration of resolution number 2020-33 to adopt the township's 2021 budget. Mr. Chrisman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as the board is aware, uh, you did have a public hearing on November 17th to review the proposed 2021 budget. At that meeting, the board of supervisors uh, authorized that the 2021 budget be advertised and put out for public inspection for 20 days as per section 3202B of the Pennsylvania Second Class Township Code. Uh, in the way of highlights from that meeting, uh, as it, you all are aware, the proposed fiscal year 2021 budget is a no tax increase budget and is a $19,300,175 spending plan for 2021. Uh, this is an aggregate reduction of 7.18% over the adopted 2020 budget. And specifically, this proposed budget reduces personnel expenses 13% over the previous year. And as I've been pointing out in our monthly updates, township personnel will, will be reduced by 27% by the end of this fiscal year. Total proposed revenue anticipated in the, in the proposed budget is $22,982,936. And by 1231, the projected year end fund balance is anticipated at $3,682,761. Again, the real estate tax millage will remain the same at 2.5381 mills for fiscal year 2021. So for a home in our township that's assessed at a value of $100,000, the total local property tax liability would be $253.81. I'm recommending adoption of this proposed budget this evening. And it's in a position tonight now, having been duly advertised and out for public inspection to do so. Very good. Any questions for Mr. Chrisman on this item? All right. Hearing none, is there a motion? Mr. Chair, I'll make the motion to adopt the Township's 2021 budget. That's resolution number 2020-33. 
Very good. Motion made by Mr. Zamuda to adopt resolution 2020-33, the township's 2021 budget. Is there a second? I'll uh, offer. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll second that. All right, very good. Seconded by Ms. Court. Any further discussion? Uh, before we vote, I would just like to again thank uh, the township manager, Mr. Chrisman, and all of the department heads um, who have worked so hard to, to, to present the township supervisors and our residents with a budget that does not increase taxes for 2021. Uh, a lot of hard decisions had to be made throughout the year. Um, the staff was up for the challenge. They delivered, and uh, I, for one, I want to thank you, Mr. Chrisman, and all of the township staff for the efforts that they've made on behalf of our residents. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, that being said, uh, all those in favor of adopting resolution 2020-33, the township's 2021 budget, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the ayes have it, and resolution 2020-33 is approved. The next item is the consideration of resolution number 2020-34, which established to establish the real estate taxes for 2021, Mr. Christman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Similar to our last item, this uh, resolution number 34 establishes the tax levy for next the next fiscal year. Section 3205A of the Pennsylvania Second Class Township Code notes that the Board of Supervisors may by resolution establish a tax levy for municipal purposes. Again, as I pointed out in our last presentation, um, there is a no, this is a no tax increase budget that was adopted just one moment ago. Our real estate tax millage does remain the same at 2.5381 mills for 2021. And uh, at this point, Mr. Chairman, this resolution is in final form for adoption this evening. Thank you, Mr. Chrisman. Any questions for Mr. Chrisman on this item? All right, hearing none, we can entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll move to adopt resolution 2020 number 34, setting the tax levy for the Township of Derry for fiscal year 2021. Thank you, Mrs. Nutt. Motion made to adopt resolution 2020-34 by Mrs. Nutt. Is there a second? I'll second that. Motion seconded by Ms. Court. Any further discussion? Hearing on all those in favor of approving resolution or adopting resolution 2020-34, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. And 2020-34 is adopted. Thank you. The next item is the consideration of resolution number 2020-32 to implement a township-wide fee schedule effective January 1st, 2021. Mr. Chrisman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is the last uh, companion piece to the adoption of the budget. Uh, each year, the township adopts its annual fee schedule. Uh, we do that in December so that we can set the set the fees beginning January 1. The resolution that's in your packet establishes the new fee schedule for the next fiscal year. So it is in a position tonight to be approved uh, and set our fees for next year. Very good. Any questions for Mr. Chrisman on this item? Chairman Abruzzo, are there any... Um any changes to the fee schedule that are, are of note, any, anything significant that might change going forward into the new year? Thank you, Supervisor. Now, each year we take a, a hard look at uh, all of our fees, what, what we charge um, for the services that are provided. We measure that against what other municipalities do uh, surrounding us and where changes are necessary, we do make some increases. So the, yes, there are some increases in this fee schedule. Uh, Chuck's office takes a hard look at all of the subdivision land development fees and the permitting fees that are required uh, to help offset those costs for his department. Uh, so there are increases there as well, but nothing that would, in my view, be excessive or above what the norms are for regions surrounding us, for municipalities surrounding us. Thank you. Any other, any other questions? Hearing none, we can entertain a motion. I'll go ahead and make a motion to adopt resolution 2020-32, which implements a township-wide fee schedule effective January 1st, 2021. Is there a second? 
I'll second that. Thank you. Seconded by Mr. Zamuda. Any discussion or further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of adopting resolution 2020-32, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the ayes have it and resolution 2020-32 is adopted. The next item on the agenda is the execution of an D30-36. It's the execution of an easement encroachment agreement and access easement at 16 at 616 Stoverdale Road. Mr. Emmerich. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Pell is the owner of property at 616 Stoverdale Road. The lot was created as uh, lot number 66 on the revised uh, final subdivision and land development plan for the point. It's improved with a single family dwelling. Mr. Pell desires to install a fence in his backyard. However, the backyard is encumbered with a stormwater easement that accommodates an underground pipe. Consistent with the requirements of the township stormwater management ordinance, the plan does contain a note that states, easement conflicts prohibited, nothing shall be placed, planted, set, or put within the area of an easement that would adversely affect the function of the easement, no person shall place any structure, fill, or vegetation into a stormwater management facility or within a drainage easement that would limit or alter the function of the facility or easement in any way. It's standard practice for us not to issue fence permits uh, or permits for other structures within easement areas. We're especially cautious when the easements uh, affect a surface feature, uh, with fences especially. In this case, we do not believe that the fence will adversely affect the function or use of the easement since it contains an underground pipe, so long as access is maintained. Um, the encroachment agreement was drafted and reviewed by Pat Armstrong and is meant to give everyone a clear understanding of the conditions associated with the installation of the fence within the easement area. In short, the agreement reserves the township's ability to access the easement area, assigns any costs related to disturbance of the fence to the property owner, requires that any damage to the pipe by the property owner be repaired and requires that the property owner indemnify the township against any actions related to the fence. With the execution and recording of the easement agreement, uh, we would issue the permit for the fence. I'm recommending that the Board of Supervisors authorize me to execute the easement agreement with the condition that Max Pell reimburses the township for the solicitor's review time and that he records the easement encro encroachment agreement and access easement in the recorded deeds office of Dolphin County. Thank you, Mr. Emmerich. Any questions on this item for Mr. Emmerich? Uh, Chuck, not, I got can, a quick, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> uh, Chuck, uh, was I clear in understanding that there are gonna be no significant issues with this fence with the uh, drainage area that's that's correct that's okay. correct thank you any other questions and if not we can entertain a motion I'll all right is there a motion i'll go ahead and make the motion uh, that the board uh, authorizes Chuck Emmerich to execute the easement agreement with the condition that Max Pell reimburses the township for the solicitor's review time and that he records the easement encroachment agreement and access easement in the recorder of deeds office in Dauphin County. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Court. Motion made by Ms. Court to authorize Mr. Emmerich to proceed as she described in her motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion seconded by Mrs. Nutt. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving this motion, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the ayes have it, and this motion is approved. The next item is E37-38. It's the adoption of a proclamation by the Township of Derry Board of Supervisors. Mr. Mandia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, I, I just wanted to... Uh, recognize Cheryl Eschenauer, who's joining us once again this evening, as she did uh, at the last meeting. Uh, and she'll be with us the next couple of agenda items. And Cheryl, thank you for uh, being with us here this evening. Uh, as the board is aware, the Eschenauer family uh, have given very much to our community since 1997. And as a result of their kindness and selfless contributions, it's being proposed to proclaim a day during the year 
as Jonathan Eschenauer Day. And as such, I'd like to read the following proclamation for the board's consideration and adoption this evening. The proclamation Proclamation reads, whereas the Township of Derry is honored to present this proclamation to the Eschenauer family, the Jonathan Eschenauer Foundation, and all the family and friends who've been a special part of the heartfelt mission you have embarked upon. And whereas the entire community wishes to thank you for your immeasurable compassion, selflessness, perseverance, and dedication in turning an extremely personal tragedy into something so amazingly beautiful. And whereas in July of 1997, Jonathan Eschenauer tragically passed away from injuries he received in a bicycle accident, he was 12 years old. And whereas through the donation of several Jonathan's organs, they provided four recipients a second chance at life. And whereas the family formed the foundation to raise funds for the development of a more comprehensive trail system throughout the township known as the Jonathan Eschenauer Trail. And whereas the foundation, the township, <coughs> Countless volunteers of family, friends, and the community hosted 10 consecutive annual events named Bike It, Hike It for John, making the construction of over nine miles of trail a reality. And whereas the Township of Derry is honored to have partnered with the foundation in this journey, all in the memory and recognition of Jonathan's everlasting spirit. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed this 15th day of December, 2020, that the Township of Derry Board of Supervisors do hereby proclaim the second Saturday of May each year, Jonathan Eschenauer Day in the Township of Derry, and encourage our residents to observe this day with enjoyment of and care for the Jonathan Eschenauer Memorial Trail. The official proclamation uh, will be signed off uh, by Chairman Abruzzo, but I did also wanna share something that uh, our department designed uh, for uh, the Eschenauer family and the foundation, uh, Becky Swigert and our de department designed this. Uh, it is um, a proclamation that's framed with the words that I just read. It also uh, incorporates uh, the butterflies uh, that are so uh, important and incorporated with the Gift of Life program, which uh, symbolizes the renewal of life through transplantation, and we've incorporated it, uh, the, the butterflies into all 10 of our Bike It, Hike It events as well. And at the top, there's a saying that says, a butterfly to remind me, even though we are apart, your spirit is always with me forever in my heart. So Cheryl will be getting this to you uh, as soon as we can, but I wanted to share that with the board and, uh, and Cheryl this evening. So we would ask for your consideration of adopting this proclamation at this time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mandia. Any questions for Matt or anyone, any thoughts anyone would like to share before we entertain a motion? Just that that was beautiful. Thank yeah. you, Matt, for honoring the Eschen hours that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Thank you for keeping, um, for just, caring for the for the Eschenauer family and for Jonathan's memory the way you have for all these years. Clearly, Mrs. Eschenauer and her family are really special people and they've been very, very um, generous um, to the community uh, for two decades, more than two decades. And it's just, so this, this is really a very special thing. We, I'm sure everybody feels a little bit emotional right now, but we're very appreciative of the efforts you've made and and of uh, the kindness of of Cheryl uh, through for all these years and then uh, leading up to tonight. So I'll go ahead and make the motion that we approve the proclamation to make the second Saturday of May each year Jonathan Eschenauer Day in Derry Township. Is there a second? I'll second that. Motion seconded by. Ms. Court, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving this motion, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the ayes have it, and this motion is unanimously approved. Thank you, Matt, and thank you, Cheryl. Matt, I think this then takes us up to, again is 
part of the next item is part of this, which is F39-43. It's the consideration of resolution 2020-37 to accept a donation from the Jonathan Eschenauer Foundation. Yes, that's correct, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, as the board will recall from our previous meeting, uh, the Eschenauer Foundation is interested in donating the remaining $103,392.70 to the township for the express purpose of constructing expanding and or maintaining the Jonathan Eschenauer Trail. I'd like to very quickly just read the restrictions and conditions of the donation into the record as it is spelled out in the resolution. Uh, a, that the donated funds will be designated to be used towards a project or projects by a public vote of the Dairy Township Board of Supervisors and shall be respect, restricted to, the, to be used for uh, work related to the construction expansion or maintaining the Jonathan Eschenauer Trail. The township agrees to restrict the above reference donated funds to be used only for the construction expansion and or maintenance of the Jonathan Eschenauer Trail. The above reference donated funds will be placed in a separate interest bearing account that can be tracked within the budget of the township and will not be rolled over into the general operating fund. D, a general accounting of the donated funds will be provided to the Jonathan Eschenauer family and foundation upon written requests not to exceed once per year so that the Eschenauer family and foundation remains informed of the improvements being made to the trail. And finally, E, when the donated funds are completely depleted, a letter will be sent to the Eschenauer family and the Jonathan Eschenauer foundation notifying them that the funds have been expended and how they are expended. So at this time, we would ask uh, for the board's adoption of resolution 2020-37 as outlined within this agenda item uh, and the attached resolution. Very good. Any questions for Mr. Mandia on this item? If not, is there a motion? Um, Mr. Chairman, I'll offer a motion that resolution 2020-37 is hereby adopted as outlined within this agenda item and the attached resolution. Very good. Thank you. This is not motion made to adopt resolution 2020-37. Is there a second? I'll second that. Motion seconded by Ms. Court. Any further discussion? Here on all those in favor of adopting resolution number 2020-37 to accept a donation from the Jonathan Eschenauer Foundation as outlined and set forth by Mr. Mandia in his presentation and the accompanying resolution, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the ayes have it and this motion passes unanimously. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. And thank you to thank you to Mrs. Eschenauer. The next item well, it's not like a proper time, I don't think, for me to say something, but may I say something to the board, please? Sure, you can. Yes. Okay. Sure. Um, and you have to bear with me, but I am full of emotion right now that the township, Matt, that you've actually um come up with a proclamation for the Jonathan Eschenauer Day. It is so moving to me, realizing the impact that a 12 year old boy has had, not only on our family, but the entire community. And Jonathan loved to ride his bike. And that's what he was doing at the time he had his accident. Unfortunately, he did not survive the injuries that he received in that accident. But it is so moving to me and so emotional to me that you would honor and recognize the memory of my son in this way. And I thank you all for that very much. As far as the money that's coming over to the township, you know, I want you to know that in this season of giving, I'm pleased to be able to present these funds, not only to the township of Derry, but to our community members and for all those that use the Jonathan Eschenauer Memorial Trail. And I think I mentioned this to you the last time I was involved in your meeting. When our organizing committee formed 23 years ago, and we came up with the idea of having a bike at hike at event in Jonathan's memory, we had no idea if it would be a success or not. And it has been truly amazing to me 
whenever I drive on 322 or Wood Road or Waltonville or Bullfrog Valley, the volume of people that actually use the trail, young, old, male, female, 12 months out of the year. And it warms my heart and it brings tears to my eyes with the realization that this is all because of a 12 year old boy. Mm -hmm. So from my heart, thank you all so very much. It means more than words can express. My sincere gratitude to you all, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Eschenauer. And mm -hmm. Thank you for everything you, everything you and your family have meant to this community and for the, the for turning such a tragic event into something so special and meaningful to the entire community. So you're very special people. We appreciate all of your, um, all of your generosity. Thank you, Cheryl. Hello. Thank you very much, Cheryl, and be assured we will be very good stewards of these funds. Thank you so much. I appreciate all your comments. Thank you. We'll just take a moment here for a little pause. All right. Well, thank you, Matt, and thank you, Cheryl. And uh, we'll move on to the next item, as insignificant as it seems right now. But uh, the next item is G44-51. It's the acceptance of financial security for the post-construction stormwater management plan for 1108 Waltonville Road. It's S-2020-023. Mr. Emmerich. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I agree. Thank you for the pause. Uh, this plan was submitted to detail the design of stormwater management facilities for a garage pool and patio at 1108 Waltonville Road. The applicants and the property owner are Michael and Megan Fernandez. HRG reviewed the cost estimate prepared by the applicant's engineer and recommended that financial security in the amount of $16,890 is to be provided. The applicants have provided the security in the form of cash and have entered into the township standard agreement to provide financial security to guarantee the completion of the improvements. I am recommending that the Board of Supervisors accept the cash financial security in the amount of $16,890 and enters into the agreement to provide financial security with Michael and Megan Fernandez for the post-construction stormwater management plan for 1108 Waltonville Road S. 2020-023. All right, thank you, Mr. Emmerich. Any questions for Mr. Emmerich on this item? If not, we can entertain a motion. I'll make the Mr. motion. Chair, I'll make the motion to accept the financial securities for the post-construction stormwater management plan at 1108 Waltonville Road. Reference number S is in Sierra 2020-023. Thank you, Mr. Samud. A motion made to accept the financial security uh, as to 41108 Waltonville Road, S-2020-023. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll that. second. <laughs> we do that a lot. <laughs> it's a draw. <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> All right. Ms. Court is deferred to Mrs. Nutt, so seconded by motion is seconded by Mrs. Nutt. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the acceptance of financial security for the post-construction stormwater management plan for 1108 Waltonville Road, S-2020-023, please vote aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? All right. Um, seeing as there are no opposed, uh, the motion carries unanimously and it is approved. The next item is H-52. It's the authorization to utilize the Hershey Special Fire Police, the Lebanon Auxiliary Patrol Incorporated, and on special occasions, other special fire police from surrounding municipal fire companies for traffic control and direction um, in 2021. Chief Warner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is on the agenda tonight. Uh, it's an annual request. Uh, as a result of uh, resolution number 217, uh, which was adopted by the Board of Supervisors uh, in 1981, which requires uh, this type of request to uh, be approved by the Board of Supervisors. 
Um, every year we have different special events that happen within the township, um, antique auto, um, parades, um, different 5K races where uh, our department is involved with traffic control uh, in order to uh, be able to supplement uh, our forces uh, to maintain that traffic control and keep traffic flowing freely. Uh, we do occasionally require the assistance of um, other agencies, uh, fire police, uh, the Lebanon Auxiliary Patrol for Antique Auto. Um, so uh, by doing that, uh, we actually uh, decrease some of the uh, the costs that are involved in uh, staffing and uh, manage some of these uh, traffic control posts. Uh, so we're requesting uh, that we be able to continue that uh, our process in 2021 uh, with the hopes that uh, we have some of the events to, uh, to do that traffic control. Makes sense. Any questions for the chief on this item? All right, is there a motion? I'll go ahead and make the motion to authorize the uh, the utilization of the Hersey Special Fire Police, the Lebanon Auxiliary Patrol Incorporated, and on special occasions, other special fire police from surrounding municipal fire companies for traffic control and direction in 2021. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion seconded by Mrs. Nutt. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the authorization, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the ayes have it, and this motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. All right, moving along, that concludes new business. Uh, the next item is the Supervisor Board or Committee Reports. We can start with Mr. Zamuda, then go to Ms. Court, then to Mrs. Nutt, and then to Mr. Wyckoff in that order. So, Mr. Zamuda, any Supervisor Board or Committee Report? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. First, I'd like to uh, thank the folks that showed up for the uh, Santa and tree lighting ceremony downtown Hershey last Saturday. Um, there's a whole list of people to thank. Uh, I'm not going to get into names now. The Hershey uh, High School Band was there, the fire department police, and, and, and a host of other folks. Uh, we had about 150 cars uh, socially distanced to meet Santa Claus, and the kids were all thrilled. So thanks for everybody that showed up and participated in that. In other news, we had a transportation meeting this morning. Uh, a number of issues were dis uh, discussed, uh, including uh, Ridge Road traffic. Uh, we're waiting for uh, a preliminary schedule of events uh, from HENR, uh, an underpass agreement, Park Boulevard lights. And one of, the main pro one of the main things we talked about was the Greater Hershey traffic study. And the question was, what's next? Um, we have two options with this. It's either just, just set it on a shelf and do nothing or put together a uh, task force within the township and start discussing how we want to approach this or if we do down the road. Uh, Chuck and I have discussed it right now. We're gonna sit down and come up with something and then present it to the township, uh, the board, and uh, see how we want to proceed with this. But we're going to wait until next year on this. There's no emergency in this right at this moment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Zamuda. Thank you for your report. Uh, Ms. Gore? Mm -hmm. I uh, was able to attend the Parks and Recreation uh, Advisory Board meeting last Wednesday. It was a good discussion, uh, reviewing what we've done this year and what's coming up next year. Uh, also wanted to thank uh, the community for supporting the annual tree lighting and uh, visit with Santa. I had the honor of co-chairing that in my role through the Downtown Hershey Association, and it was so nice to keep uh, an annual holiday tradition going, albeit a little different. Uh, so it was, it was wonderful uh, to be able to light the tree and have Santa come in on the Hershey Volunteer Fire Truck and have so many children come through the, the Drive Up Santa event and the, the looks on their faces when they got to see Santa and uh, talk to him from a safe distance uh, was, was really all worth it. So uh, many thanks to the people who helped with that. Um, wanted to mention too, just as an update for the Community Center Capital Campaign, 
Uh, we are still a little bit under $2.7 million. So we lost a little bit uh, in the last couple of months, but not much. And I'm really pleased that we continue to get some donations and pledges from people. So just as a reminder to the community, uh, you can visit hersheycommunitycenter.org and there is information on a pledge form if you wish to make a multi-year pledge. Uh, you can mail in a check or you can also just make an online donation and it's very simple. Uh, that website also has um, project photos that you can check out so you can learn a little bit more about the project and see uh, what the latest is with the construction. Um, also wanted to mention that we did recently send out mailings to uh, people who are on the Friends of Dairy Township Parks and Recreation list, uh, as well as those who um, are on the Senior Center list. And we also sent out pledge reminders. We've gotten a couple new donations lately, which is great. Uh, we have a grant application in uh, with a local foundation and we're submitting another one uh, in early 2021. And uh, lastly, I wanted to mention uh, that the Hershey Area All Things Diversity Group is gearing up for its uh uh, sessions next year, which again will at least at this point uh, remain virtual. And January 13th, the community is invited to attend a session with a professor from Elizabethtown College who is going to be discussing understanding religious differences in our community. And it's free to attend. All you have to do is register. You can look at the Hershey Area All Things Diversity Facebook page uh, and you can register through Eventbrite. Uh, and if you don't want to register, you're still welcome just to watch the stream on the Dairy Township YouTube page and, and enjoy the conversation. So just wanted to let everyone know about that as well. And uh, I guess just finally, happy holidays, everybody. Hope you have a, a safe uh, holiday time with your family and, and stay safe in the snow as well. <laughs> oh, jeez, I <laughs> forgot about that. Come Sorry. Um, yeah. Hey, Susan. Susan. Go ahead, Rick. Susan, quick. Ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Susan, quick question. Who's the professor coming from E-Town? Oh, I knew you were going to ask me that. Can I look up his, give me a minute. I can look up his name in a sec. I just don't remember it's, off the top of my head. Okay, because that's where I did. I did my undergraduate work there. I was, I was wondering if it's one of my teachers. Oh, I don't know. I, I have a feeling he's a little younger than us, Rick. So maybe not. So I'll, oh, check, okay. his name, I'll check his name and let you know. So I, I don't remember off the top of my head. I apologize. Susan, can we, um, for the, uh, the community center and um, the mailers, is there a way like, and I don't care how, you know, I'm open to any suggestion, but I, I think I've had people come up to me and express a willingness to contribute. And I don't, you know, I don't want to ask how much or how little when they say that, but um, is there a way we can send out or post something that's more township wide to, for those people who still, you know, who would like to participate um, and maybe just weren't part of the first wave of the capital can't, you know, no, sure. We're we're planning on doing that, but this is a little bit of a different campaign, given the fact that um, this project has. Um, been protracted a little bit and has evolved quite a bit uh, and then you know enter in a pandemic so some of the traditional fundraising um, tactics that we might have employed this year we've just decided not to I mean the you know you don't want to be tone deaf to the um, what our community is going through and and some financial hardships and, and health challenges that they're facing and to send out like a, a township wide mailer just seemed um, not not right um, so you know, now that the project's really moving and we've got a little bit more to look at other than demolition, uh, what we're planning on doing is um, as Matt and his department have updates, we're going to share them on the weekly e-newsletter uh, that the community can subscribe to. And those will include a link for people to donate. Um, and then Parks and Rec, um, send, they do a quarterly newsletter and we've always included the link in that too. So people can do that. Uh, it's just real simple. All you do is just go to hersheycommunitycenter.org and there's a page there uh, one with naming opportunities that lists all that are available. And if you just want to make a $25 contribution or whatever amount, you can just pay online or send a check. It's really simple. But we'll continue to send that messaging out, especially now that there's a little bit more to see and uh, we're getting into the more excitement, um, you know, with the project moving forward. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, this is not... Uh, none of my boards or committees have met since our last um, meeting, but I did want to just thank the Hershey Volunteer Fire Company. It is nice, like Susan said, it's nice to see some of these traditions still happening in this crazy year. And that's one of the really nice traditions. And it was good to see that too happen this, this past weekend and still going on this week. So, and happy holidays to everyone as well. Thank you. Mr. Wyckoff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we've been meeting so much regularly, I don't know what I'm gonna do with these next three weeks off, uh, Tuesday nights. Um, 
But I will say back in January, I doubt any of us had any idea what 2020 had in store for us. Um, we can't change the decisions that were made that brought us to this point. Uh, we can't change the impact that COVID has had on our taxpayers or small businesses, but we tried to make things a bit easier with the delayed tax date and the small business relief. And um, we did what we, what we could do and what we did do, I think was put the right team of people in place and empower Chris Chrisman and the department heads to do their jobs. And tough decisions and sacrifices were made by staff to balance the budget. And thank you to all the staff for your continued hard work on behalf of the residents. And thanks for rising to the challenge this year and for balancing the budget. Um, I know I've certainly learned a lot this year, and I look forward to continuing our work on behalf of the taxpayers in 2021. Um, thank you to Pat Armstrong and Diane Tokarski for being great new additions to our team. And thank you, Mr. Abruzzo, for your leadership as, as our chairman. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, it's Hershey Week on PCN. If you haven't watched it, you got to check it out. It's, it's great coverage and history of our town. And that's all I have. Happy holidays. See you in January. All right, thank you, Mr. Wyckoff. Um, I also do not have any border committees that have met uh, since our last meeting. Um, and so we'll, we'll conclude supervisor border committee reports and move on to departmental reports. And the first one is the police department report from the chief. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Only a couple short things uh, tonight. Uh, we cleared the uh, first hurdle with uh, PCCD in our application for uh, grants, for a matching grant for body cameras. Uh, so we're hoping uh, to cross that finish line on that and uh, be able to uh, implement that program in the department for uh, transparency for our community. Uh, and the second thing is uh, uh, there has been a, uh, a snow emergency declared uh, for uh, tomorrow into Thursday. And all I'm asking is uh, once that uh, snow starts accumulating on the roadways is if you can stay home, stay home. It makes our jobs a lot easier. Uh, EMS crews, uh, public works, and I don't want to steal Tom's thunder, but uh, just uh, stay off those roadways and, and let us do our jobs. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chief. Good advice. Good advice for everybody. Be patient. Um, let, the, let the township and PennDOT clear roads. It just, and fortunately, this, maybe this is one of the you know, weird or strange or perverse benefits of the pandemic is that uh, so many people are working from home. Maybe that'll eliminate some of the, uh, you know, some of the congestion on the roads to help make your jobs easier. Um, the next item is, or the next department is the Hershey Volunteer Fire Department. Um, Dave Sassaman reached out before the meeting. I don't recognize anybody on the call as being from the department. Uh, Dave, um, did ask that, um, he did say, uh, this is in reference to Natalie's comment about Santa Claus and his, uh, appearances around the township, Dave and some of his colleagues are performing, uh, bodyguard duty for Santa as they take it, as he is being driven around the community tonight. So Dave is not able to be here. But we appreciate uh, his efforts and all of the fire department crews' efforts in uh, bringing Santa to, to and spreading some cheer throughout the township this year. Um, Dave reports that the fire department is operationally ready for the snowstorm. Uh, they'll have standby crews in the station throughout the period, throughout the emergency period. Um, he also, you know, we got notice last week of the passing of Steve Walls. Um, Steve has been a firefighter for many years in Hershey, and I'd just like to um, just pay respect to Steve at tonight's meeting. Uh, we, we all appreciate the work that our volunteers do and, uh, at the fire department, and uh, these are men and women that, you know, aren't being paid to do what they do for us, and um, Steve's done it for a lot of years, and so to out of respect for Steve and his family, I just asked for a moment of silence um, for a special person and a special family. Thank you. Uh, 
the, the department will be participating in um, funeral events for Steve uh, Saturday morning uh, during that time, of course, you know, the fire department being who they are, uh, they'll make sure that our area fire companies are available uh, and, and stand by should we need them in Derry Township, but uh, most of our firefighters will be attending Steve's funeral services. So um, that's Dave's report for tonight. And uh, thank you for the moment of silence for Steve Walls. The next department is the library, Laura. I think we skipped public works. I think we did too, but I had to go <laughs> off my agenda. <laughs> I don't want to steal uh, Tom's thunder. The snow's coming. He's important. I am back on the agenda. So Laura, if you would like to do, uh, sure. show me some deference, I will go back to Tom, who apparently is uh, already in the midst of a pretty significant snow cleanup effort. No problem. Y'all can just steal away. Okay. <laughs> um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as we all know, we have a pretty big event coming. And uh, to your point, Mr. Chairman, I, I am hopeful that the current climate in the community is going to uh, work in our favor, that everyone, a lot of folks, I should say, are working from home and schools working remotely. Uh, one challenge we are facing is we have four people out due to uh, COVID quarantine, which is just about a third of our staffing complement at this point. We are filling a couple of those slots with part-timers. Probably the most important point of this is those four people that are out are four of our more experienced operators. So we have a lot of young guys we're working with, but they're hungry and eager and ready to learn. And I'm hoping we'll do pretty good, all things considered. I just ask everyone to be patient. It's certainly going to take a little longer than it normally would were we at full staffing level and not getting the quantity that it appears we're going to get. If there's anyone has any questions for me, I'll be happy to try and answer them. Mr. Chair. Got some feet. Oh, go ahead, Jim. You got some feedback, Mr. Chair. We, we couldn't understand a word you said. It's kind of like Sorry. Darth Vader a little bit. <laughs> Every, everything tonight was great up until that point. <laughs> so close. Is it okay if Natalie takes over until you get that squared up? Maybe you just have a question to ask, Tom. I think you were trying to ask a question, though. No, no question. No question. Did anybody else have any questions for Tom? Good luck, Tom. Stay safe. <laughs> I, I thought we were playing charades there for a minute. I was ready to go for like first word. <laughs> This is the township okay. holiday party. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Tom. And now we will go to Laura for okay. her report from the library. Yep. Uh, just a few things to report is that we've got a few different services going on now to allow people contactless library pickup. Um, we're offering curbside pickup so you can just drive up to the front of the library and give us a call and we'll bring your items out to your car. Uh, we're also offering home delivery, which is staffed by our friends volunteers. So if people are interested in having books dropped off at their front door, again, there's no contact between anyone. Um, we are offering that as well. We're also offering curbside printing. So if you have any um, questions, you can give the library a call, but we're just trying to keep the building as safe as possible and remain open to the public. That's all I have tonight. Laura. Laura. Oh, oh, yes. I just had a quick question. And Laura, you, may, you probably already did this, but if you haven't, would you reach out to the senior center? I'm just thinking with 
many seniors not leaving um, their homes as much due to COVID and now due to winter weather. They, mm -hmm. and they may not know about this service. What a wonderful gift that would be to know. Yeah, me and Melissa just oh. corresponded this morning about Perfect. all this stuff. Yeah, Thank you. No problem. Laura, if snow happens the way it's supposed mm -hmm. to, will those operations be closed tomorrow? Will you post that? Somewhere? We will post that. Yeah. So we're our plan for right now, if the forecast and the timing stays at it, as it sounds, we will open like normal, but then most likely close uh, in the early afternoon. And that's again, if everything stays, that's projected now. And so those services like curbside pickup would not happen while the library is closed because ideally the staff would be going home so they don't have to uh, stay out in the snow also. But but we also always have our digital library available, regardless of the library building being open. Um, and people can always email library at dairytownship.org, no matter when it is, and we will be able to get back to you that way also. Sounds great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It looks like Chris is back, so we'll see okay. if his voice is back in, in good shape. <laughs> can you hear me? So no Darth Vader stuff. Good. Thank goodness. All right, then. Um, oh my gosh. Moving up. We're at finance. We're at, we're at finance. Now. That yeah. won't be very long. I know exactly what Cheryl's going to say. Cheryl, at finance. <laughs> thank you for passing the budget. And that's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm close to being able to pull up the agenda here. It's a part and of the room. Um, and Mr. Mandia is next. All right, thank you, Natalie. Mr. Mandia, Parks and Rec. All right, thank you. Um, I just touch very uh, briefly on um, some of the comments uh, Kevin uh, Ferguson brought up at the beginning there. Um, and I think a couple of board members addressed uh, the information in terms of the Mueller Senior Center uh, very correctly in terms of the Moeller Senior Center and the senior group, uh, they are providing a large uh, capital contribution to, to the project. Um, they are in fact paying uh, approximately $2,000 a month, uh, which is similar to what they're currently paying. And I think Kevin, what, what Kevin was seeing in the, uh, in the business plan was a lump sum. And I think it is labeled contribution. Um, and it's roughly 24, dollars $24,000, I think, which would make the 2000 times 12 months. That, that's kind of that, that dollar amount. So, uh, so what Kevin saw was, is accurate. I think it did say contribution, but it's, it's $2,000 a month over 12 months. Um, the senior center, and, and I, I went into some details in terms of what that space, was, how it was gonna be utilized and how it was also gonna be community space. I think Susan touched on that. Um, the other point that's, uh, important is the seniors uh, center will be covering all staff and office expenses as well. So they'll be covering uh, the cost for their staffing and, and the office supplies that they would utilize uh, as part of their operation. And the other item that we're still working on too, as part of our overall fee structure for uh, in the varying levels of memberships and fees is that having a separate fee structure for the senior group that uh, participate in programs outside of the senior center, they will still be paying a fee to participate in non molar center uh, activities. Uh, if they're a member of the molar center, it may be a, a bit of a reduced rate, but nonetheless, they will be paying an additional fee to participate in some of the other activities in the building. So, um, and certainly, and, and Kevin knows this, I mean, I'd be happy to sit with him sometime and, and we can get into even more details. Uh, but I think off the top of my head, as I was jotting down some of the comments, I think they were the items that, uh, that Kevin had brought up. So I, I wanted to touch on those very quickly. Uh, secondly, um, at the last meeting, uh, it was asked to bring the board and the public up to date on some of the project credits that we received uh, as it relates to the redesign for the community center project. And as I went back, I did report on September 8th uh, at a board of supervisors meeting that we had finalized credits uh, from three of the five contractors based on the redesign of the project. Um, and the status of the, those negotiations are the same as they were uh, at that time. So currently 
uh, the credits that we've received from the general contractor plumbing and fire protection total $633,000. $37.47. Uh, the project team continues to work with the two remaining contractors and uh, they've been issued a CCD, which is a construction change directive, uh, which enables them to continue doing the contract or fulfilling the contract that they had signed uh, while we continue negotiations and discussions on what that credit is going to be. So the 633 and change uh, involves the general contractor plumber, plumbing and fire protection. And we still have not received the final credit amount, which will be added to that 633 for the electrical and mechanical. So we are still working with uh, both those contractors on what that credit's going to be. The other savings uh, that we can note is uh, the reduction in what the bleacher cost is going to be since the natatorium was reduced and the number of seats uh, were reduced. Uh, that's estimated at about $20,000. That has not been um, bid out yet. That's just a, an estimate. Um, the bleachers as it was part of the bid package was going to be provided by the owner, by the township. Uh, and we have not uh, put those out to bid yet. So the estimate on the savings and the reduction of bleachers is about $20,000. So that brings us to about $653,037.47. If we look at the other side of the house in terms of the redesign, and that's the cost of the redesign. So the actual redesign cost itself for the engineering and architectural work uh, as approved by the board was $76,000. $786.20. So that was the redesign costs uh, to downsize the building. Uh, legal costs uh, to date that we've spent and primarily um, on some of the credit negotiations uh, as well as dealing with some of the delay claims for COVID and some other items that we've been running into are uh, just under $17,000 total for the project was $16,972.30. So the, the redesign costs right now are about $93,758.50. Uh, the other costs that have been brought up um, are related to the foundation change. I know that came up a meeting or two ago. Um, my understanding with the foundation change was not prompted by any redesign. I think the, the foundation change was recommended whether the board decided on a 50 meter, a 35 meter or a 25 yard, which is what we ended up with. Theoretically, if we went with the 50 meter, then obviously foundation cost would have been more because you're talking about a bigger footprint. So the foundation change uh, actually is the least that we could have had since we have the smallest footprint of the building. And that was $289,614. Um, so that's, that's really the items. I, I just wanted to bring up the foundation, although not necessarily related to the redesign at all, um, but I wanted to bring that up uh, as an item uh, and give the dollar amount to the board and the public of what that was and uh, that that had to be done in, in, in any event. Um, we have uh, hit some rock, which we all, fully understood, which was all part of the contingency for the project. Uh, to date, we have about $64,000 in rock uh, removal, which once again was in the contingency. Um, and we certainly anticipate as we get into the other pool structures uh, and the rest of the building that we, we may see some more rock as well. Um, so that, in a nutshell, that's, that's kind of where we are on the project. Once, once we finalize those credits with the other uh, contractors, I'll certainly be circling back with the board to let you know what that that final uh, credit will be. So that's all I had, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, Mr. Mandia. And you did say you were going to start providing. Did you say monthly updates, Matt? Like, you know, moving into the new year, we we were a little sidetracked with all the COVID issues, um, so we hadn't been really peppering you with questions, but. Moving forward in 2021, can we expect sort of regular updates? Yeah, it, it, what we plan to do is very similar to the PowerPoint that I did um, 
I guess the last meeting. Um, and we'll, we'll update that maybe every other meeting or so. And uh, as there's something you know new to report and possibly every meeting as we really get into the meat of construction. But um, yes, we'll, be, we'll certainly be doing that. And as these credits come through, I'll, I'll be making sure that's part of the presentation. Very good, thank you. All right, thank you. Mr. Chair, excuse me, I have a few questions for Matt, if you don't mind. Okay, go ahead. Hey, Matt, um, regarding the changes, uh, the foundation and the 25 meter pool, I believe we saw design options for those in the drawing phase. Those could have been included as bid alternates, right? When the bid package went out and that would have avoided us maybe these change costs in the future. That's my understanding. Is that, uh, would, could we have included them in the bid package as alternates that we could have gone in the, in the future and not had to pay for quote unquote change orders? In terms of the varying foundation options, Carter, is that what you mean? Yeah, the foundation and the pool. I remember an option A, B, C, and D. I'm just curious if a 25 could have been as a bid alternate and we might have avoided some of these change costs. I guess if it was included as a, yeah, as a bid alternate, but it, but obviously that it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I know you've stated multiple times, including on September 8th, the uh, estimates on the cost savings. Thank you for doing that. Um, Chris Chrisman, 700,000 or 633,000 is almost the equivalent of a 0.35 mil tax increase, I, I think, if I'm doing the math right. So that certainly adds up to a lot of money. And Matt, you said 100,000 a year in operations and maintenance. If I'm doing the math right, that comes out to almost $4 million over 30 years. That sounds like a lot of taxpayer money that we're saving with that change. Mm -hmm. And this is still a PIAA sanctioned pool, the competition pool, right? They'll be able to host events there. And yeah, so, yep, high school events will still be sanctioned in, in the, in the uh, natatorium that's being built. Great, and, and the changes that we made regarding the foundation, we did that to go along with the recommendations of our engineering consultant, right? Yes, that's correct. Great, so that was something that we couldn't really avoid. And it's my understanding that the changes that we made to the project will ultimately not only save us money, but have brought the project in under budget currently right now. Is that also the case? Uh, I don't know about, under, well, I guess, depending on, you know, when we, if we did hit sinkholes and rock and there's some unknowns that, you know, we don't know, we're, we're still early on in construction. So I hate to say we're coming in under, that's right, but as of now, I want to be able to say it. So as of now, we're under budget. Legal. Great decisions. <laughs> and just one last thing. I was a little confused about a statement made earlier. When the changes were made, do you recall Natalie and I submitting a business plan to you? I don't, I don't ever remember bringing a business plan forward regarding the changes. No, I think, I think what they were referencing was, you know, we had the Ken Ballard study early on. We had the SFA study after that. And then we conducted an internal kind of pro forma based on our knowledge of how our department operates, of how we feel the community is going to utilize the facility. Um, and, and I think that's what they were referring to was the two year pro forma that, that we did as, as a department. Got it. I just, I wanted to set the record straight. Don't want to be gaslit on anything regarding that. Um, I think we made the decision based on our paid expert consultant telling us to, that we would estimate a million dollars in savings up front and a hundred thousand a year. So I think we were wise to listen to our, our expert consultant. So that's it for me, Matt. Thank you. I appreciate all your hard work on this. Thanks again. Thank you. Uh, any, is that any other questions for Matt on his report? All right, moving along, Township Engineer, Mr. Bonanno. Matt, you're on uh, mute. That's the first time I did that in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, no report tonight, but uh, just wanted to uh, be in the last meeting of the year. Um, thank, thank the board and the staff, particularly Chuck and his staff, you know, working day to day with them for another great year and, uh, just happy holidays to, to everyone, uh, and a safe, uh, new year. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. That would bring community development, Mr. Emmerich. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have two other items this evening. 
One is, I'm um, sure everybody's heard of the Early Childhood Education Center that's being brought forward by the Milton Hershey School. We've received, received application from the Hershey Trust Company for a conditional use, which um, the Early Childhood Education Center is termed a group child care facility in our zoning ordinance and requires conditional use approval by the Board of Supervisors. So I'm looking to schedule the hearing for that for the January 26th meeting at 6 p.m. That will be presented to the Planning Commission on uh, January 5th. So within our limited days that we have to schedule that, um, the January 26th meeting is about the last time that we could within the, within the 60 day period. So I wanted to make you aware of that and make sure there's no conflicts with, with anything else for that 6 p.m. time slot. No, I think that, that makes sense. Thank you. Um, also, um, Stumpy's Hatchet House uh, was approved by the board in 2019 as a conditional use. Um, at that time, there was testimony during the case that, um, first of all, it's a BYOB facility, but also at the time, the corporate uh, directive was to have participants 21 years and older. Um, that's changed corporately. And I believe since the Hatchet House has been open, that they've had some, actually many requests to have, um, to allow some younger groups into the, um, into the facility. Uh, I did provide the board with a, a copy of a request from, from uh, Dan Dalton, who is in the meeting tonight. Um, oh, and he's, I'm sorry, he's actually on our, on our uh, screen. And um, also, um, Grady, who here, who are here to answer any questions you may have, but um, Stumpy's as as a corporate uh, group has been opening up to um, eighteen to twenty one without uh, supervision and has gone uh, to allow thirteen year olds there with uh, accompanied by someone over twenty one years. So, although there was never a condition attached to the 2019 approval, there was testimony. So I felt it best to bring it back before the board um, for, for comments, if nothing else. The way they're looking to operate is, as I've stated, uh, anybody under uh, 18 would have to be accompanied by someone over 21. Anyone under the age of 21 would be staged in an isolated pit area inside their 13,000 square foot facility. And that would be an alcohol free zone which means that the people bringing or you know, chaperoning the people that are under 21 would not be allowed to drink either. Um, the isolated areas will be monitored by the staff as, as all of their other locations. Uh, individuals under 21 years of age will be required to wear an identifying wristband indicating they're under 21. Uh, not included in their um, information that they've provided, but I can tell you that one of the conditions from the hearing was that all of their employees be ramp certified and they have gone through and done that. So with that, I'd open it up for, I, I guess I, I see Pat adjusting his tie. <laughs> I, I guess I should mention too that uh, Pat has reviewed this and is not sure that we could even limit the ages um, legally. But again, I wanted to bring this forward to the board just so that they're aware. Yeah, so and just, oh. just, just to follow up on Chuck, uh, he's, he's absolutely right. There is no, if you read the conditional use of decision from back in 2019, there's nothing in there. There's no condition with respect to the ages. And uh, to be honest with you, there's probably, <clears throat> uh, it would be a stretch for, for a rational basis to, to include such a condition. This is I think more so just because in the minutes from that meeting, not the decision, but the minutes, it appeared that there was a there was some testimony or a presentation from the applicant referencing the the, the 21 and over uh, uh, statement. So Chuck and I felt it would be uh, better and more appropriate just to bring it to the attention of the, of the board uh, to, to disclose it to you guys and let you make them aware of it. And if you have any comments or concerns to so let us know. That's all. So if we have comments or concerns, Pat, I guess we can just 
we don't need to do uh, deliver them to you tonight, but I do have comments and I do have concerns, but I, they may not be things that we can legally address. So I'm not going to uh, discuss them publicly now, but um, we don't have to take any action is what you're saying. This is just a, an awareness item for the board. Correct. Okay. Anything else, Chuck? That's all I have this evening. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Chuck on that issue or the, any of the other ones? All right, we'll move on then to the township manager, Mr. Chrisman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just to reiterate kind of what was discussed earlier with the snow event coming into our region um, in the next 24 to 48 hours, you know, we're making uh, significant preparations to get underway. Um, as you're aware, we, we declared a state of uh, an emergency this afternoon for two reasons, one to uh, try to to keep the snow emergency routes clear within the township, but more importantly, to preserve our right to access FEMA and Pima funds in the event that this turns into a much larger issue for the Commonwealth and if funds would become available, having this declaration in place allows us to do that right up front. Um, Secondly, I just I want to thank Tom and his department for, for all the prep work that they're doing to get ready for this snow event. I know it's considerable, um, as he noted in his report, being understaffed at this point. I'm just going to ask and, you know, uh, and, and urge everyone to be patient with our department as we work uh, around the clock to get our streets clear. But it is important that we do keep the snow emergency routes throughout our township open and free of, of parked cars so that we can plow those streets curb to curb pretty much right away. Um, lastly, I do want to thank this board and the staff for uh, everything that's gone on and, and the support that you've provided this year for 2020. It's been a, it's been a difficult year for everyone with COVID, but uh, as everyone has pointed out, uh, we have all risen to the challenge. Uh, we have answered the call to service and we, we continue to do that. And I'm sure 2021 will be much the same. So before I leave you, I just want to wish everyone a very uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday season and a Happy New Year. And hopefully you all are safe and healthy. And I look forward to seeing each of you, even in Zoom land, as we've been doing and will continue to do for the next year, probably. Um, just stay safe and enjoy the holiday season. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grisman. All right, that uh, would conclude departmental reports. It takes us to the next and final visitor public comment session. Same rules applies to, the, to, to this session as they did to the first one. Uh, please state your full name, first name and last name and address. Try to keep your point to three minutes or less. Again, it's a comment session. It's an opportunity for members of the public to place a comment into the record. So with that, Mr. Blayhush, I would ask that you uh, usher in the first speaker or member of the public. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, we have Kevin Ferguson. Kevin Ferguson, 1338 Quail Hall Road. I wanna thank you for uh, <clears throat> providing some more information on exactly how the Bowler Center uh, fits into the, the pro forma because certainly when you look at it and there's no operational cost itemized out, it's a concern as to who's gonna be paying for that. Uh, so the savings right now for the construction cost is at 560 million around that. So it would be interesting to see. Uh, Mr. Verdelli in April had a table that he showed the public that showed principal interest on the two $14 million loans that we are responsible for, it would be interesting to see exactly how much those tables change uh, by a savings right now of $560,000 over the life of those loans and for a project that is gonna be serving the community for 40 to 50 years. Uh, Mr. Wyckoff had referred to the uh, hybrid system, if it was included as an alternate, that it wouldn't have been as costly as a change order. The problem with that is that the hybrid system was not designed until April. It, it was not available or even thought of uh, when those contracts 
in that project was put out to bid. So it would have no effect on the $280,000 that we just spent on that foundation. And the engineering uh, firm ARM that you relied on to make that, that, that change in April uh, completely contradicted the advice that they gave to the township in November, just a few months prior to that. So it makes that, uh, that advice itself in my opinion, rather suspect. The structural engineers <clears throat> were pretty solid in the design that they had. And ARM said one thing in November and completely contradicted themselves in April. But that information would be suspect as to why we actually spent another $280,000. Uh, the, the five year business plan that showed a cost benefit for the larger pool. The, the one other issue with the larger pool was that it allowed for the taxpayers to use that pool during the prime hours in the afternoon and in the evening. That was a consistent complaint for, for members that, that were both for the community center and against the community center. They couldn't use the pool from three to seven, September to March, because the, uh, the youth were in there using it. Reducing the pool to 25 yards, you, you have that problem. And that has not been explained to the taxpayers yet either. How will that smaller pool satisfy the demands of the community? The taxpayers certainly have a right to get in there and use that pool at three, four, five, six o'clock, seven o'clock in the afternoon. If you looked at the lap swimming usage during the summer, if you were really interested, you would see how heavily used the lap lanes are come rush hour right after work. They're packed and you often have to wait for a lane. How is that? How are you going to allow the taxpayers access that pool and at the same time satisfy the high school swimming and diving team, the youth uh, private swimming clubs, synchronized swimming, and the Special Olympics? You have a problem there that has not been explained to us. You're either going to take revenue away from renting out those lanes and allowing the public to go in to use them, or you're going to maximize revenue by renting all the lanes out, denying the public. You, you really do need to explain to us how we're gonna be able to use that pool because we're certainly entitled to it, but so are the kids. And you also have to understand one lane provides for two lap swimmers. That's how that works. Given the variety and talent, you can only get two swimmers in, they split the lane, one lane for two lap swimmers. So before you go ahead with a change order vote on this, and I'm assuming that's gonna to have to happen because it happened with the foundation, uh, I think you should uh, let the taxpayers have comfort in knowing that they are going to have access to that pool since we're paying for it. Thank you and Merry Christmas to everybody. Yeah. All right, Mr. Perlehush, any other speakers? No, Mr. Chairman, as our final speaker for the year. All right. Then uh, before we adjourn, we'll, we I just want to... Uh, uh, thank everybody, the township staff, uh, our solicitor, township engineer, uh, for really a tremendous effort this year, um, as well as, you know, I haven't said this before, but um, all of the board members, all, each of the supervisors, Mr. Zamuda, Ms. Ms. Court, Mrs. Nutt, Mr. Wyckoff, um, we, this was truly an, a, 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 I don't even know, the most unusual year we've ever had in, in Derry Township, just like it's been the most unusual year for many municipalities. And uh, the, the effort that all of the board has put in, the long hours, and really the good teamwork that this board has demonstrated for the last eight months from the beginning of this pandemic, uh, we had to make many, many difficult decisions we had lots of good opinions and thoughts, uh, but I think, you know, we came together and coalesced around decisions uh, for the betterment of the community and in conjunction with the recommendations from the township manager and our staff. And truthfully, um, we have, the board and the township have a lot to be proud about in terms of how we weathered the storm this year. And and the Board of Supervisors, the individual members uh, deserve a lot of credit for that. So thank you for all the hard work, 
all the extra hours, all the long meetings. Um, I do wish, I've already wished the township staff and, uh, and, 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 and others happy holidays, but to Susan and Rick and Carter and Natalie, happy holidays. Thank you for everything you guys do for this community and you've been doing for this community and you will do for this community. Have a safe holiday with your family. Um, hope to see you. I don't know where, perhaps down somewhere in the community, um, but uh, stay safe over the next couple of days as well. And uh, look forward to seeing each of you in the new year. So thank you. And with that, we can entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that so moved. moved. All right, motion made by Ms. Court, ladies first, seconded by Mr. Zamuda. All in favor, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Our meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate See you guys. Everyone. Merry Christmas. Be safe, everybody. See you next year. Happy holidays. Thank you, Rick. You too. Happy holidays, guys. Thanks. See you, Pat. Bye, guys.